2006 Jeep Commander. You forgot this car existed. And now, you're going to see one every day. It's an LG for the bro melody. It's an SUV, three row Grand Cherokee Commander. Jeep Commander. If you can't lick enough boots, here's your car. Jeep Commander. Brought to you by saying, thank you for your service to the TSA. Commander. For a man who insists MREs taste good, this is the official car of Knife Guy. Commander, brought to you by a flea market stand selling military-grade backpacks. I'm a Jeep Commander. Look at my dash. It's so tactical. Hex bolts hold it in. They're real. Don't question me. My gear knob is also bolted in. For real! These are real bolts! Don't look too closely at them! Is there a name for that guy who jumps in on multiplayer FPSs and assumes control on mic? I'm in command now, and you're all gonna follow my instructions! This. Jeep Commander. For the guy who won't leave the house without his tactical side pouch and his bulldog named K-Bar and a Beretta pistol onto which he engraved the words property of the U.S. government on the slide. One more. Jeep Commander. The car for you if your favorite movie is a let's play of The Punisher for the Nintendo Entertainment System where the saxophonists get shot. This Jeep Commander is currently sitting at 119,121 miles. 20,000 of which were put up by Louis himself after purchasing it in February of 2019. Initial production specs rate this at 235 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque, which sounds about right for acid reflux, the car, which burps out a fuel economy of 16 miles per gallon city and 20 miles per gallon highway. So here's the background. Louis got this because he wanted something with four-wheel drive. He had been in the market for an Explorer or a Trailblazer, but the ones he found were complete messes, hence the Jeep Commander, which not only has the 4.7-liter Powertech V8, which made its debut in 1998, but also the Quadratrack 2 four-wheel drive system, which came out the following year, just in time for Y2K and Y2J. Long story short, although AMC did the initial design development, Chrysler ultimately designed the Powertech. We're talking about the engine here. Supposedly making it the first new Chrysler V8 since the 1960s. The 4.7 liter features a cast iron block and aluminum heads with two valves per cylinder. It also uses chain-driven single overhead camshafts, you know, one on each head. And it also has a metal... <laughs> this is... We're in mid-2000s here, and this is a metal clutch fan. Wow. I mean, I know it's doing its job, but just seeing one of these things just screams like 1987 to me. Meanwhile, the Quadra Track 2 arrived with a two-speed chain-driven transfer case that gives you three different drive modes. Four all the time, which applies torque strictly to the rear wheels in standard driving conditions. Four all time, which applies torque strictly to rear wheels in standard driving conditions. Neutral, which is used for towing and four low in which the front and rear axles are locked together through a 272 reduction planetary gear set. I would assume it's meant to give the car an air of versatility, but then it's a five-speed automatic as opposed to a traditional four-speed truck transmission, which makes you wonder if it was really meant to be driven all that ruggedly. But I suppose if you're outdoorsy, it offers plenty to work with. Towing capacity sits between 3,500 and 6,500 pounds. It's decently roomy, and surprisingly, you almost aren't aware of the size when you're just driving down the road because this car feels lighter than it is. It's got a surprisingly quiet engine, and it has good visibility. But the engine, 4.7 liter V8 isn't all that powerful, although I'm not sure big power is a prerequisite when you're actively seeking out a Jeep Commander. If anything, this thing is a grown-up Power Wheels truck. The thing about the Commander is, you could have gotten a Grand Cherokee, which is basically the same car. The Grand Cherokee is more comfortable, rides better, has better resale value, and with the same off-road capability. But the Grand Cherokee is smooth and flowing and a little too feminine. 
The Jeep Commander Riker moves through the air like, I am my commander square, which is also my personality. This is a V8, sure but it feels like a rental V6 Charger. Ask for full power, and what you get is a church bus trying to climb a hill. And the auto box wants top gear at 30 miles an hour, and to do something with EPA something. You can use the fake manual mode to request a lower gear, but it refuses to help like your school's registrar's office. For real, it won't shift down. Not even for a hill, unless you flick it into two, and then maybe it'll give you three. Or, if you're trying to get a lower gear to go up a hill, you, you push the accelerator all the way to the floor, and then the kickdown will violently acquiesce, like a mother telling you you can ride your bike without a helmet. And she's like, fine, but I'm not driving you to the hospital. All right, I'll go up to the tree, and this is the panic stop. What's it gonna do? Hey, it works. Full chatter back. Slight. That was a very, a very good analog brake system. The car dove down. I'll be honest. This is the first ABS system I've had that's locked up during, like, slick conditions. Oh, it did. When it. So the Jeep Commander wasn't that popular. Its entire production run was from July 18th, 2005, until 2010. That gave us four model years from 2006 to 2010. The Pontiac Sunfire lasted longer than that. The Ford Pinto lasted longer than that. That 70s show lasted longer than that. Eight freaking seasons to get from 1976 to 1979. Where did the Commander go wrong? I mean, sure, it's not exactly mind-blowing, but worse cars like this have lasted longer. Was it just a timing thing? Coming at the tail end of the aughts, when the auto industry and the economy and everything else in general tanked like the last Terminator movie? Maybe it just wasn't rugged enough to stand against other Jeep offerings. See the four-door Wrangler. In a sense, it's a car that offers the appearance of outdoorsmanship and a jawline that won't quit, but it's the equivalent of a Pantera CD case housing the best of Kenny G. Jeep Commander. For the guy whose favorite beer is five beers. The gap between a Commander and a Forerunner is greater than the gap between a Commander and a Chevy 2 from the 60s. A Forerunner is a pleasant vehicle, if a bit boring, but a well-proven technological showcase. A Commander is ancient technology, but it's not boring. Nope, the steering is imprecise. You don't know where you're going. And it feels like the lug nuts are finger tight all the time. What fun! The springs are filled with reaction balls and spent 10-gauge shells. The seats are, are cricket bats hitting your glutes broadside over every pedal. When trying to figure out why the Jeep Commander came up short, it's probably best to look at the state of cars in the late 90s heading into the new millennium. Because it was around this point that everyone was climbing over one another like crabs in a bucket trying to get close to that family SUV nirvana. That wonderful place where money grew on antennas and everybody drank from the bejeweled chalice of consumer confidence. From what we could find, it seems like the idea was to take the Grand Cherokee and turn it into a three-row SUV. Could it be going after the Forerunner? The Forerunner was offered with a third row, but did Jeep really think they could take on Toyota? I'm just speculating. But what we do know is that this platform wasn't big enough to accommodate a third row while retaining its pragmatic function. I mean, look at me trying to sit in the third row. There is no space for your feet. You are on the deck. So what you ended up with is an ugly, cluttered mess of a design, has angular lines that calls to mind a child trying to draw the Jurassic Park Wrangler from memory. Even the late former CEO, Sergio Marchioni, remarked, This car was unfit for human consumption. We sold some, but I don't know why people bought them. Look, if you need a seven-passenger car and you have to have this four-letter word on the front, fine. If you have a black t-shirt with two round headlights and seven grill slots and you wear it to a dimly lit mouth-kissy restaurant, fine. If the most interesting thing about you is I drive a Jeep, fine. If you think I drive a Jeep is a personality and you need seven seats on top of that, look, I got nothing more in this notebook. Fine.
I got, I got nothing else. Powertech designed in 98. Quadra Track 2, only kind of great. Jeep Commander for the guy who loves MREs. Bastardized Cherokee. Bastardized Jeep Cherokee. Bastardized Jeep Grand Cherokee. So if you want to hear my demo, don't think you do. Then you can come inside my limo that is built for two. Actually, it's just my Mustang on the scene. Feeling so fly, I better take some Dramamine. So I don't get, won't get, don't get ill. Because I don't drink, won't drink, don't drink swill. But if I don't think, won't think, don't think chill, then my mind won't be casual as espadrilles, huh?